Welcome back. Many of the uh, commands that we're going to be using in Rhino have multiple options available within them. And to show you how this works, we're going to go ahead and get rid of anything that we have in the scene right now. And let's go ahead and start up the polygon tool. So left click on that. And it asks us for the center of the polygon. So we're going to place it somewhere in the center of our scene from the top view. And as I pull out, you'll notice that you get a preview of a polygon. Well, our option here is number of sides. So if I were to select this, as I, as I put my mouse or the cursor over top of that, you'll notice that it turns blue. And that's a hyperlink. Clicking on that allows me to set a new number of sides. So let's say I chose three. Um, to accept that, you can just enter or right click on the mouse and it brings you back to the general command for that or the, the general prompt for that command. I'm still in the command. I haven't dropped anything yet. I haven't uh, specified a location yet. And again, I can just go back in and specify something new. And uh, until I actually left click to specify where I want that, the command won't actually end. So I'm now out of that command. Again, to restart something, just right click and I'm back into that last command again. And notice that it'll also remember the last setting that you used. So if I wanted to change that to four, for instance, four would give me a square essentially. Um, so that's something that we're gonna encounter quite a bit regardless of the type of command that we're running. Another thing that I should mention within a command, if I were to restart this again, to abort out of something, you simply hit escape and that'll take you out of that command. Now, right right now, I, I have two objects in the scene, and I can clearly see them both in the top and the perspective view, so I could select one or the other in either one of these two views. But what about the, the front and the right view? What happens when I try and select those in one of these two uh, front or right views? You'll note that um, it doesn't allow me to select it just yet. It gives me a selection menu with option. And as I move my mouse over top, uh, it sort of toggles back and forth between either the, uh, the four-sided or the 12-sided polygons. And basically my selection is ambiguous from this perspective. So they're, they're essentially being portrayed as just a straight line because I'm looking at this just like this, right? Uh, so it, it has no idea what I want to select. And that'll, that'll happen often, especially in, in one of these two views down here, or even in perspective view, if I'm sort of aligned like this and I go to select, it will, again, sort of ask me to be clear on what I'm trying to select. So if you see the selection menu pop up, um, you, you might want to make sure that your perspective view is enabled so that you can see what you're about to select. Also, when, uh, when it comes time to copy and paste something, let's say, for instance, I'm going to copy this square, and so I do a control C on my keyboard to copy it, and you can see up here it says command copy to clipboard. So even though I didn't start a command here, it's actually done it, and it's in Rhino's memory up top here. I'm going to now paste it, and it says paste. So I've pasted that square. Um, now, if I if I just deselect by clicking somewhere else, and I go back to select, I now have two objects that are at the same place. They're they're identical objects essentially, and so at this point, I would have to select one of the two to then be able to to do what I need to do next. So when you copy and paste, I'm just going to back up for a second, undo the paste. When you copy and paste, I'm going to copy and paste. When you're done, the element that you just pasted remains selected. And in order to avoid confusion, you might want to just click on that and drag it away so that now, uh, now you just have one instance there and one instance there. So to, uh, to drag elements or to move them, we've been using just a, a click on an element and, uh, and then a, a left click on an element and then a left click again to move it. And you can see that, that that's updating. 
You can also uh, move things from the front and right viewport. So if I were to move something in the front viewport, you'll notice what's happening in the perspective viewport. It's actually moving up in the perspective viewport. And uh, if I were to look at that now, you can see that it's no longer on the same plane as where it was originally. So moving things from the front or the right viewport can help uh, get things exactly at the right height. Uh, you can also move things within the, the perspective viewport uh, off of, off of the, the construction plane. So right now I'm just dragging and it doesn't matter where I drag, when I release it's still on that plane. If I hit my control key and then drag, you'll notice that there's a white preview line in the perspective view and look at what's happening in the front and right viewport. I'm actually coming off of off of the ground plane in perspective. So um, hitting the control key will allow you to to move off of the perspective ground plane. Now I'm actually below it. Um, in most cases I suggest that you you stick to working in the top and perspective views to start with and then if you have to actually move things up go to the front or right viewports. One more thing I'm going to note here, I'm just going to get rid of everything for a second, is that um, a lot of these commands are specific to these viewports so I'm going to start up a polyline and I'm going to show you what happens when I when I just draw a polyline in my top view. It's obviously going to be on 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 the ground plane in that perspective view. What happens if I start that same command in my front viewport as I draw on the front view and end the command? That front viewport, whatever I'm drawing here, is actually appearing on that red line in the perspective view. And if I were to do the same thing in the right view, you can see that it's now showing up. It's actually like this. So I'm actually, when I'm drawing in the right view port, I'm drawing on that green line, on an imaginary plane that runs through that green line. So this has been just a really brief introduction into the, uh, the interface and how you move around in Rhino. In the next tutorial we're going to start looking at more specific details for some of the commands. So I'll see you there.